So a guy contacted me recently with a really interesting request. So what he wanted me to do was to give him a, a little routine, a little practice plan that he could work on alongside the other things that he's doing uh, in terms of his guitar practice, but something that he could work on to build his music theory as it relates to playing the guitar, to build his general musicianship basically. Um, something that he could just keep plugging away at in the medium term and just, just bring up his skills. Now, what, what sprung to mind for me immediately were, were three different areas to work on. The tough thing though is each of these areas is, is really quite challenging. Uh, and it's the kind of work, I mean, I, I like to think of it like it's like working on your multiplication tables, trying to memorize your multiplication tables. This stuff is not sexy uh, and it can be quite frustrating and you need some endurance and some resilience to be able to stick with this. But if you stick with each of these areas, if you keep working on them, then over three to six months, you'll make a step change in terms of who you are as a guitarist or who you are as a musician. And so these are the areas that I told them to, to focus on. Uh, and so this is what I thought I'd talk about this week. Okay, so the first area really is learning the neck learning all of the notes on the neck. Now I've spoken about this in the past, I've certainly talked about the first stages of this in the past using flashcards to, to give you uh, a list of all of the 12 notes on the neck and then to test yourself. And that's certainly um, what, what I, I recommended he do in the first stage. Uh, and actually there's a great little website, it's called random.org and if you go on there uh, if you've got access to a PC or whatever, go on there and you type in, you find the lists, the random lists page, just type a note per line on there. So you've got all 12 notes on there and then hit the randomize button. And then that just gives you a nice little random list of, of notes to work with. And you can just do this every day. And in fact, the other thing I, I like to do when I'm doing this is to use flats one day and sharps the next day and just alternate between flats and sharps. Because you'll find even though you know, even though you know that A sharp and B flat are the same note, you can sometimes find yourself just going, having a mental blockage if you only work with flats and you start to encounter sharps. It's, it's just one of those things. So you may as well alternate between the two. So all you do is you type, type the names of the notes in there, hit randomize and just go through that list. And on the guitar, between the first fret and the 12th fret, every note exists on every string, so we find them. So let's say the first note was E, then you just find all of the E's and play them like that. And maybe the next note is C. So you just work your way through the list until you can find all the notes. And like I said, it'll take a little time, but just, just do this every day. And once you, once you reasonably proficient with this, the next stage is to be able to orientate yourself more properly on the neck. And uh, really, you need to think about what does it mean for you when you're orientating yourself on the neck? What kind of scaffolding, what's your mental Im imagery do you use to know the neck? So for example, for me, it's the pentatonic scale. When I first learned to improvise, I learned to improvise using the pentatonic scale. And I found if I can find that, then I can find chords, I can find the major scales, found three notes per string. Everything kind of drops out if I know where that is. For other guitarists, it, it might be bar chords, or it could be the three notes per string scales. It's going to be different for you, maybe. But uh, like I say, I use the pentatonic scale. And with the pentatonic scale, each position you can think of as having a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So for example, in that first position, the left-hand side is what my index finger tracks, and the right-hand side is where my third and fourth finger are. Yeah. So that's, that's something else to be aware of. And what we need to do is to alternate between orientating the left-hand side of the shape and the right-hand side of the shape. And finally, we can use the pentatonic scale in a major key and in minor keys. 
So instead of just typing the 12 notes out, I type out all 24 keys. So all of the 12 notes is a major key and all of the 12 notes is a minor key. So I've got 24 lines in, in random.org if I do it that way. And then I do exactly the same exercise again. So let's say the first note is E and let's say it's E minor, for example. So I go through each of the strings in turn and see if I can, I can play the pentatonic scale where the left hand side of the scale or the right hand side of the scale lands on, on that E. So there's my low E and the shape looks like that. So I can do that. What about on the A string? I know my A and my root note is just there. And so I play the pentatonic scale there. On the D string, it's just there. On the G string. On the B string. And on the E string. And again, I just work my way through the list. It's going to take a little bit of time, you know. Um, but just see if you can make your way through the list. And the other thing to be aware of, if you notice how I'm doing this, what I'm not doing is I'm not playing the note and then playing, playing the scale. I'm just moving to the position and playing the full scale from the high E down. Yeah, and the reason for that is it's very easy to, to kind of focus on that Rue note and find that you always end up playing it. And you don't want to be doing that if you're improvising. You want to be able to easily have access to all of the notes on the neck. And so you need to kind of take your focus away from the root note and focus on the full shape. Okay, so that's, that's part two, that's stage two of this. So once, once you can do that, and this, this will take some time, like I say, this is, this is an exercise that's going to take weeks and months not a couple of days, yeah? So, so pace yourself. Part three is to pick a location on the neck. And what I like to do is to just work my way down in, in frets, so every other fret. So I'd start with maybe the 14th fret, for example. And what I do is I try and visualize a root note that's somewhere above the 14th fret, but nearby it, and then see if I can play that scale. And I work my way through that list. So, for example, if the first scale was E minor again, I know it's just there. If it was C, um, A flat major, let's say. And it's where the root note falls, so I don't care about the shape falling behind it. So I work my way through the list in that first position. And then I move my hand down two frets and see if I can do it the same again. And down two frets and see if I can do it again. Yeah? And just work your way down the neck and see if you can orientate each of those keys into some kind of a position that sits around that location. And once you can do that fluently, you really do have a great image of the neck and you can access keys all over the place really, really quite easily. So hopefully you can see how useful that is. Okay, so the second area I, I recommended he worked on was ear training. Now again, ear training can be really tough. Uh, it can be really frustrating as well because you, you, you're learning, you're teaching your brain to be able to focus on something it's never had to focus on before. So it's going to take a while before you can really kind of hook onto the notes and really start to recognize them. But it, it really it is really one of those areas that turns you into a, into a true musician because you can start to hear notes, you can start to recognize them, you can start to recognize chords and things like that. And then you'll find that when you're playing the guitar as well, when you can recognize the notes, you can start playing those notes and you stop playing the shapes, you start playing the sounds in your head. And this is why it's so useful for you. Now, when, when you start ear training, probably the most useful skill to have is to be able to recognize the notes within a scale. Okay, so the degrees of the major scale or the note functions within the major scale. And then you can move on to the minor scale and the modes and things like that. But this, this is different 
to just learning intervals, learning random intervals. You probably find, most people find r intervals, are, learning those can be really quite frustrating and not that useful. And the reason is when we hear the notes, when we hear music, we always hear music in context. We always hear music within the context of a key. So the notes that you hear are, are notes that are played in the context of the key and in, in the context of the chord that it's played against. So for example, uh, a major third can sound really quite different in a different context. Let me, let me see if I can demonstrate. So there's a major chord and there's a major third there. Yeah? And you hear how, how major and how kind of, uh, people like to call that happy, but you see, you have that major third sound. Let me change the context. So there I've got a, and now I've got a minor, a minor chord on, and I play these two notes, okay? Now that is a major third, but hopefully you can hear how, how different that sounds in this minor context, yeah? So what I, I recommend you do is you learn the notes of the scale. So, and what that means is you learn, you know, the root note is one, second note is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one again. You learn them like that. Um, like I say, plenty of apps to do this, and there's a great app that's free to use, uh, and I'll do it, give you a quick tutorial now. So the site I recommend you explore if you're on a budget is called musictheory.net. Okay, and if you have a look at the top here, you've got the exercises section and then scroll down and you can see here's all of the year training exercises and the one particularly that I think you should look at is this one called the note ear training. Okay. And you can see as soon as I launch this, it plays me a reference note. So this is a root note. And then it gives me a note that it wants me to identify. And I can hear that that's the, the sixth degree. So that's A, G, G, A, F, D. And then you just keep doing this. You just keep answering the questions as new notes arrive and you just work your way through. The other thing you can do here is you can go up here and you can see that you've got all of the notes worked out as well. So you could change you could change the scale that you want to work with. So at the moment it's C major, but I could change it to C minor, for example, just by if you know what the note interval is. On. And there you can hear that's the octave, um, the flat seventh octave. And then you work your way through that just in the same way. The other thing you can do is to flip this around. You can use the random lists website again and you can type the numbers one to seven in there and just randomize them find a root note uh, and then just randomize that list and see if you can go through it and see if you can sing the notes that you see in front of you so it might be a six but four but three but helps if you can play it seven da, an octave da. yeah can you see the note and can you sing it uh, and again this is developing your ear this is developing your connection between the music that you hear in your head and being able to vocalize it being able to hear it okay so the final part to this the final part of this torture is learning the note functions in every position on the neck and again it's worth starting small it's worth maybe just starting with the notes of the major pentatonic scale and then you'd work with a full major scale and then you do it with a minor pentatonic scale to the minor scale until you've got the all the degrees of the chromatic scale in there 
And again, you just type these into that random lists.org. So for example, if I, I could type in all of the degrees of the chromatic scale in there, and then I, I just work my way across strings. I put a root note on each string in turn and see if I can find those degrees, the, the, the scale in there. So let's say I was working on the left hand side of the shape. I put my index finger on that root note and the notes I want to find are, I don't know, flat five, flat two, six and flat seven. Okay, so there's my root note, flat five, that I could reach in that position, there's two, one there and one there, flat two, six would be there, and flat seven would be there, and obviously I just keep going through all of the positions, all of the notes, and then I move on to the next position. So on the fifth string, my root note is there, so flat five, flat two, six, uh, flat seven, um, there, and then you move on to the next position, okay? Um, so that's the left hand side, and you can do exactly the same thing with the right hand side, so I can put my, th typically I put my third finger just there, um, flat five would be there, um, flat two, um, six, and seven, flat seven, and then I could move on to there, flat five, flat two, six, flat seven, then move on to there to give me more, more frets below, and just work your way across the neck in the same way. Okay, so that's it. Like I say, three exercises, they all can be really frustrating in their own right but they all stack on top of each other. They will all give you knowledge of the guitar that will allow you to make that step change in terms of your playing if you stick with them. None of these exercises are sexy. All of this requires stamina and resilience to stick with it. But if you stick with this over the weeks and months, in four to six months, you'll find that your playing has made that step change your understanding of music has made that step change as well by doing this focus and by putting a little bit of time on each of these areas every day for that four to six months you'll be amazed at the payback that you get from this after after you know half a year of doing this so have a go with this i know this is tough but it's it's worthwhile giving a go and seeing where you get with it so anyway, that's it for this week and we'll chat next time.